any discussion involving the Tagore family naturally takes us back to around the early 1700s. We know that uh, the Tagore family's lineage usually starts from uh, the time of a man named Ponchaman Pusha. But then again, uh, historical sources have suggested that the family traces its roots um, back to 994 AD. It was the time when Bengal was under the, the Senas, the Sena dynasty. And uh, there was a lack of uh, Brahmins in the state. So the reigning king was a man called Abhishu. And uh, he had contacts with North India, um, with the king of Karaj called Vira Singha. And Abhishu had requested Vira Singha to send a couple of uh, rather uh, he specifically mentioned to send five Brahmins who could actually revive the fallen glory of the state, uh, bring back certain ritualistic practices, the knowledge of which was available with uh, the Brahmins of Kanaj, back to Bengal, which had lost that particular knowledge. Virasanga obliged and sent five Brahmins, and the chief. Uh, of these Brahmins was a man called uh, Bhattanarayan. And uh, when Bhattanarayan and the five Brahmins came to uh, Bengal proper, uh, they spent around two to three years and thereafter they couldn't return because it is said that they lost their caste once they had left their. It is when we, uh, Bhattanarayan actually came back to Bengal the second time, realizing that he can no longer live in Kanauj with the other five Brahmins, that he properly settled in the land of Abhisuddha. Um, there, from here actually we trace the ancestry of the Tagores who we know today. Sixteen generations, if I am not as uh, mistaken, 16th generation from Bhattanarayan was Ponchan, who, uh, whose original uh, home was in, near the Joshua district. Um, and from there, he came to the city of Calcutta, newly developing, newly emerging city of Calcutta. As you know, during this, uh, it was in 1690 that the so called Kolikata was founded by Chanak. And uh, it was shortly after that um, Ponchana with his uh, brother Shukdev, Ponchana and Shukdev Ushari, they came uh, from uh, the Joshua district to, uh, and settled near uh, the Ganges. They took her to the land near the Ganges in former Govindo. And uh, they uh, brought their household deity with uh, which was a Kalita Pudir actor, an adaptation, we might say, uh, of, of, of Makali actor. And he started when a, as a puja for a home that was erected near the Ganga. And uh, from there, what happened is that he was interested in. Uh, actually exposing his practices to some of the English travellers who used to walk by the Ganga. This wasn't the birth of the name Tagore yet, of course, uh, but he was referred to as Thakur Ponjanon. And uh, thereafter, Ponjanon uh, had a son, Joyram, in Joyram Thakur. Joyram became uh, an army to a sort of a collector and he also began learning, uh, I think it was uh, French um, and he used to repeatedly go to Chandunnagur. 
Joyram uh, eventually brought, bought a lot of land in, near Esplanade and uh, there he wanted to shift his family. But uh, what happened is, this was the time when Shiraz uh, was more or less starting his uh, campaign against Calcutta, uh, which was a stronghold of the British, and the old Fort William was still standing. Um, so, uh, due to repeated attacks, they had to fall back. The, the residents of the Esplanade area had to go back, and as you know, the Fort William was eventually destroyed. And thereafter, after the Battle of uh, Plassey, uh, the English company decided to pay off many of the residents of the Esplanade area and uh, take over their uh, residences. So they paid a Joyra a hand, handsome amount of money, taking which he went off uh, to Mathuriyakat. And it is here that the story of the Tagore family properly starts. The Adibai, the, the first house where Joyram came and settled, is in a uh, is actually near this house. It is uh, in Two Rogunandam Lane. That is the address of the house today. It is uh, um, around uh, ten minutes away from this street, Prashant Kumar Tagore Street, and uh, there. Joyram settled down with his uh, uh, family. His wife's name was, if I'm not mistaken, Gonga. So Joyram and Gonga uh, settled down at, uh, at their residence in Patapiyarat. The Tagore family has four proper Vimesi branches from Ponchanam and Shumti. Um, the family spread to four parts. Uh, the first is Patapiyarata, Jora Shako, which is the most famous. Mm -hmm. Koyla Hatta, Koyla Hatta, Thakur, uh, you already know that, and Chorbala. These are the four um, areas where the family later on branched out. Uh, Joyram eventually uh, had uh, two sons. One was Nilmoni and one was Dorponaran. Dorponaran was the elder son, Dorponaran, Nilmoni was the younger. Um, Dorponaran and Nilmoni both were uh, educated in. Arabic and Persian. This was done for a reason. The reason was that um, uh, they were trained to be officials or scriveners, people who could deal with official legal documents. Thorbonara himself actually um, became a Diwan of uh, the French company at Jamal because he later went on to the French. Language. And uh, of course, he was trained in Sanskrit. All of these uh, early members of the Tagore family were trained in Sanskrit, beginning from Panchagan and Shukdev Tagore, because they were Pujaris, so they were, it was by definition that they required to know uh, Sanskrit and uh, make a study of the texts. So, um, uh, later on, what happened was there was a fallout between uh, Dorpanara and Nilmoni. Regarding uh, the uh, separation of the family property, um, Nilmoni therefore decided to leave Dorpanarayan's uh, property with a with a settlement, and uh, went to uh, uh, what we might call the place of today's uh, Jolashanko Thakurbai. Although this 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 happened in around the 1760s. Um, the Jurashapur uh, Thakurpadi was built uh, in around the 1780s, the proper house structure that we know. But when Nilmoni was there, he, he bought it from a man called some Shet. The Shets and the Boshaks were very uh, famous in, in the Shudanuti and Gobindapur area because they were the original uh, uh, families who, used to, uh, who had inherited landed wealth. Uh, this was also um, a culturally uh, you know, significant time because you had the birth of a new social class, uh, the new rich, as we, as we say it, who uh, get their money and their livelihood from dealings or acting as middlemen with the British government that had formally established itself in Bengal. To continue our story, um, Dorpanaran is uh, 
the founder, we might say, of or the or the ancestor of the Patriarchata branch proper. Now we can say that because Lord Monaghan stayed with uh, in Patriarchata, his uh, descendants are part of the Patriarchata branch, of which I belong, my humble self belongs. And from Nimoni, we had the other branch of the Tagore family, um, the one where the great poet Rabindranath Tagore uh, is a descendant. This does not mean that the family never really had, um, but after the split, there wasn't any connection. There was a very good deal of connection between the two families. And uh, culturally important ideas, significant uh, debates and issues of the day were discussed among these families. Um, Dorpo Narayan's son, was uh, one of his sons, was Gopi he decided to leave uh, the Adibari of the family and uh, come and settle in uh, this area that is uh, Nutun Bajar and Patriyakata Street, uh, where it is properly called. He got four plots of land and uh, there he erected four buildings. Today, the numbers of these houses are 65 and 66 Patriyakata Street and uh, um, the opposite side it was 12 and 13 Prussian Nokomartin Street. Although uh, uh, this house that we have today, built in 1884 by Jyotindra Mohan who was a descendant of uh, Gopi Mohan, the address currently is 13B Prussian Nokomartin Street. But uh, Gopi Mohan decided to build four houses for his four sons. And uh, the most important uh, air who he had, the eldest, was Horokumar And uh, Horokumar was a Sanskrit scholar. Gopi uh, it's important to say a few things about Gopi because uh, he is, after all, the proper, uh, uh, we might say, his culture and influence in a great deal of way to Bengal's future. Uh, Gopi Mohan Tagore was a learned day, uh, Arabic, Persian, Urdu, um, French, uh, Sanskritized Bengal, we might say, and, uh, and English. So he was one of the first men of letters. And he used to uh, have dealings with the company and often used to work as uh, a translator. And uh, he often um, um, translated various types of old Sanskrit texts into, into Bengal. The most important reason he is or is that he was a patron, one of the early patrons of Presidency uh, uh, College, the Hindu College actually, uh, which later became Presidency uh, College, and now, now Presidency University. Um, Gobi Mohan's son was Horokumar Tagore. Horokumar Tagore um, was, like his father, a learned uh, and he started building the family Sanskrit library. He used to play the sitar. Um, although he wasn't a, a professional, uh, he uh, spent a great amount of his time on, on music and instruments. He was uh, very much interested in um, uh, trying to look into the remnants of old uh, music, musical uh, cultures within uh, the Shambhavid, texts, because he knew Sanskrit, this was available to him very easily. And he also encouraged Sanskrit learning among uh, other uh, uh, members of the family and uh, those who would generally come to visit. Uh, it is not just this, uh, the, the Sita that he learned, Parupumar was taught vo vocal, basically, vocal music at first. Uh, thereafter, he was uh, trained in, an, uh, in a percussion instrument. I don't remember what percussion instrument, but perhaps we can assume that it was an old form of the tabla. And uh, then he learned uh, the sita. There was no uh, reason uh, as such for him to learn these instruments, just that instrumental music was would later become a very important part of the family. We might say that Orokumar Tagore was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a sort of founder of this tradition of uh, the family members taking on instrumental music 
uh, more than vocal music, although vocal music is very important. Shorika uh, Mohan would also play the, the sitar, like his uh, grandfather. Um, perhaps his father, in all probabilities, it was Gopi who wanted above all that Horokumar be able to translate the uh, music from the Shonopedi texts and therefore give a practical dimension to the musical uh, knowledge that he has acquired from his literary studies. Um, he learned from a master who used to come from North India. I don't recall his exact name, but perhaps we, we can look into this. Um, but uh, there isn't enough evidence that he uh, took a great uh, amount of uh, uh, time to actually devoted a great amount of time to the sitar as much as he had devoted to Sanskrit texts. There is uh, a great deal written about him in glimpses of Bengal. During this time, Horakumar actually built up those uh, the, the structures of these four houses and made them much stronger. And uh, the proper faces of these four houses would come out in the next generation, where, where we have Horakumar's eldest son, Jyotindra Mohan Tagore, and uh, his younger brother, Shorindra Mohan Tagore, to come into the stage. Um, so from here we have the two figures, Jyotindra Mohan and Shorindra Mohan, two brothers. Um, Jyotindra Mohan born in 1831 and Shorindra Mohan uh, nine years later, 1840. Jyotindra Mohan Tagore uh, is a figure who we know that um, was very significantly uh, one of the first, uh, we might say, literary and dramatic enthusiasts. A connoisseur who actually supported the development of um, uh, all sorts of arts, not just say uh, uh, drama or literature, but music as well. His, uh, his foundational uh, studies in uh, dramatic cultures led him to actually write uh, original dramas, some of which are available in the British Library. He is very significant because he built up the family's fortunes a great deal. Uh, of course, he was a polyglot, a man who knew many languages. Um, he was a prodigy like his brother because he graduated from um, Hindu college, learned a bit from Sanskrit college, and then uh, I think uh, went to presidency. Uh, or, and then afterwards he, uh, he, he, he learned at home. He had a master who used to come at home, um, uh, uh, Alexander, Alexander something, I forget the name. And uh, Jyotindra Mohan was trained like Gopi Mohan in, uh, in Sanskrit, Persian, Urdu, and uh, Bengali, of course, and, and he knew English very well. He is often uh, he is known as the Maharaja Bahadur, uh, Sir Jyotindra Mohan Tagore, because he was knighted, and uh, he is KCSI, Knight uh, Commander of the Star of India. He was a part of the Bengal Legislative uh, uh, Council and uh, of, often took on various portfolios, education, uh, and was also associated with public administration. He was one of the most important men of his times and uh, contributed a great deal to um, what we might say charities and um, you know, building of schools, so on and so forth. In around 18. 50s, he, in, uh, he and his younger brother, Shorindra Mohan by then, had uh, initiated the Pakhuriya Nata Bongo Nata at number 66 Pakhuriya Nata Street. It was the first, uh, we might say, uh, sort of private theatre which opened its doors to the public later. And the first uh, play that was uh, staged there was. Uh, Kali Generally, when we think about Jyotindra Mohan, we tend to think about Shorindra Mohan along with him. 
the younger brother uh, helping or getting influenced by the older brother. Showing the moon, uh, we know that the, which is the main object or uh, uh, main, uh, main concern. He joined Hindu college when he was nine years old. And from then on, he stayed uh, 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 till another decade or so. He completed his education there. And uh, when he was around 14, as you know, he wrote a work in history and geography of Europe. Uh, he wrote this uh, history, um, this work on history and the geography of Europe in 1857, the year of the Sepoy Mutiny. It was published in, in that year. And called uh, And then the next uh, year, the very next year, he wrote an original drama um, called Mukta uh, Bhagina. And uh, then on, he went on to translate Kandita uh, Sher Valvika in uh, into Bengal. The literary culture of the family was always at the forefront. And uh, when we think about Shorindra Mohan's interest in music and musical cultures, it is uh, a great deal owing to his elder brother, Chodindra Mohan, that we can think about um, uh, Shorindra Mohan's early interests in learning the science of music, as it were. He would later go on to say that music was a science, uh, more than he would say it was an art. Jyotindra Mohan Tagore and Shorindra Mohan were connoisseurs and therefore they had a lookout for talent. Various types of singers, various types of, you, you know, this was, uh, this was at the heart of the Bengal Renaissance. So you had public playhouses, theatres and uh, other sort of, uh, you know, uh, public spaces that were being used for entertainment. Private houses used to open up uh, with their, uh, their doors for social performances by um, then we would say notch girls and other sorts of entertainment which included classical uh, musical entertainment as well. We know that uh, in Bengal became the center of, uh, of traveling musicians after, uh, after the city was properly born and the, Mughal, the influence of the Mughal Empire came. Two members, two particular members of the Vishnupur Karana were very important as the, the, you might say, culturally in the history of uh, the Patriarcha categories. Uh, one of them was uh, Ketri Mohan Goshan, other is Jodhuman Bhattacharya, Jodhu Bhattacharya. Uh, more importantly, Ketri Mohan Goshan, because he was a part of this Jodhindra Mohan circle uh, the, and used to uh, perform in Jodhindra Mohan's court. He became a member of the uh, and where they used to have lively debates about musical advances in the West and uh, dramatic cultures uh, of the Occident and uh, try and find out ways in which uh, Indian culture can also be uh, presented uh, in a similar fashion. Shorindra Mohan, uh, when he grew up in the court of uh, Jyotindra Mohan, we might say, and uh, um, he was lucky enough to be taught under a, a, a man from Benares, Lakshmi Prasad Mishra, from whom he learned the sitar. Um, and uh, of course, he interacted a great deal with Khetra Mohan Goswami and others. And uh, they began discussing the possibility of formulating an orchestra in, uh, on, on, on the lines of a Western orchestra. This is a novel concept. We know that instrumentalists and singers perform together. That is one thing. But to have a full-fledged orchestra who are performing maybe Indian and Western tunes is a very, very new idea that uh, did not exist till then. That is why often the history of orchestral music in India is generally looked uh, back uh, to Khedra Mohan Goswami, Jatindra Mohan and Shodan Mohan and others because of the novel way in which they initiated this idea of orchestration. And the first time this idea was presented to the public was in uh, was through a play, Rokhna 
and um, uh, uh, the music of which involved an orchestra with Western um, with Western music. That's why I'm saying that this is a significant moment in the life of Rudendra Mohan is that. Uh, because they were playing Western tunes, there was a great deal of debate about whether to use Western notation or Indian notation. Shorindra Mohan, as we all know, from here we begin our discussion of Shorindra Mohan actually. Um, we know of the numerous uh, accolades that he had received all over the known world and he was the, at one point in time the second most decorated man after Bismarck. Uh, but he actually, uh, towards the end of his life, uh, had overtaken Bismarck by two more, uh, 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 we might say, uh, uh, degrees that he received from uh, universities. It is interesting that he always associated himself as a doctor from an American university, not a British university. Although he was uh, received, but although he was revered as a doctor of music in absentia from Oxford. But he decided to take the 1875 University of uh, I think it was Philadelphia. Philadelphia, University of Philadelphia doctorate, and there is a great deal of amusing, um, as you might say, uh, discussions in state archives which involve that episode. But he was Doctor Shorinjo, Doctor Raja Shorinjo. It is uh, it is a pleasure to actually uh, belong as a. Um, I'd say a, a descendant of a man like Shorinu Montego myself, I play the sort of um, keeping in mind that the family's literary and musical legacy involves uh, uh, an individual who actually uh, was revered as the first musicologist proper of India. We know of Dr. Rande, we know of Vishnu and others. But um, the innovations that were put in by Shorinu Mohan a great deal seemed to outline the ways uh, in which Indian music would later be perceived in the West and uh, later on understood in the East.